What is up, everybody? Welcome to Ginger Runner Live, episode number 13. Ooh, episode number 13 today. I have two wonderful guests. Not only are they badass trail and road runners, but they're race directors. They uh, put on some local uh, Southern California races, some of the best uh, that I have run, and I'm super stoked to have them on the show because they're my first race directors uh, that deal with races that I have run down here in Southern California. They're going to answer all of our questions about being race directors and what goes into making stellar top-notch races. We have Kira Henniger and, of course, Molly Kasouf. Thank you so much for joining me, ladies, and we're about to start Ginger Runner Live. <laughs> Ginger Runner. Yay! Yay! Uh, I am so excited to have these ladies on. Um, I have run multiple Kira races. Actually, I don't know if I've run a Molly race, but I'm very, very excited because uh, Who's in El Moro, which is Molly's race, is coming up this Saturday, and I plan on being there supporting people out there running. Probably not racing, but definitely okay. clapping people and and cheering people on. So let me introduce my guest tonight. Super stoked. Kira Hedegger, what is up, Kira? How are you? Hey, how's it going, Ethan? I'm super Good. awesome. Uh, it's awesome to have you. And joining us as well, Molly Kasouf. Hi, Molly. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I, I... <laughs> Molly got a way better high than me. <laughs> Sorry. I know. Hi, Kira. <laughs> and... Hi, Molly. <laughs> oh, my God. It's going to turn into Hi, Ethan making yeah. voices. Episode. Ethan. <laughs> Can't believe it. Okay. Uh, yeah. I'm so excited to have you two on um, because you both put on stellar races uh, of the trail caliber, um, which is which is kind of what I've been doing, especially within the last year. Is definitely more ultra events and trail uh, races, and I I love them. I have this deep appreciation for running on the trails and this love of nature and stuff like that, and. You two ladies put on some of the best. So I'm super stoked to have you on because I want to start talking specifically about why are you race directors? What is it that you do? Uh, like, What do you spend most of your time doing as race directors? Some, maybe some of the frustrations of the job, uh, your, your unsung heroes. Um, so, I mean, I could go on and on about how much uh, I respect what you guys do because I have never done it. I can't even imagine doing it. I know it's a lot of work. So let me first start by asking you, Kira, you just finished, you just wrapped up Leona Divide, which is a 50-miler and a 50K race. I know that last year was, uh, I ran Leona Divide, that was my first 50-miler race, which I was, I, I couldn't believe that I actually signed up for a 50-mile race. Uh, but I did, and I finished it, and it was awesome, and it was a race. So you just wrapped up Leona Divide, 50K and 50-miler. How are you feeling right now, now that the race is done and behind you? Yeah. Um, you know, it's it's really interesting after directing a big event like that. You're super stoked because you're done with your event, but it's exhausting. And the way that I can describe it is after putting on a 50-mile race for about a week, I feel like my body doesn't feel like I ran 100 miles, but mentally I feel like I raced 100 miles. And it's... Wow. It, it legitimately that's how you feel it's it's so exhausting but you're so stoked because you just put on a great event and it you know this year um, we had epic weather and everything was um, was great so yeah but tired you know I'm, I'm coming back though <laughs> yeah would you can is there a recovery period after putting on a race as a race director cuz i know there is for running it is there one for directing it it, it usually takes me about Two weeks um, after Sean O'Brien, Molly and I were were running. Uh, Molly is one of my best friends, and we train a ton together. And I sort of pushed through the exhaustion, and we ran a bunch together. Um, but after 50 mile races, it takes me about two weeks. I mean, I'm just absolutely wiped mentally and physically. So about two weeks, yeah. Yeah, uh, and you're not the first race director that I've heard that from, as far as having a recovery period. So I guess the next question is. Why? I know that you put in a ton of work before the race. What is it that you are doing before the race that leads up to the actual event? How much time before are you planning this race out? Um, I mean, are you strategically choosing the course months and months in advance, or is it weeks in advance? Is it a year in advance? How's the process work for you? 
So usually I calculate for any um, one of my events, I usually put in about 400 hours of work per event. Oh my god. Oh my god. Yeah. yeah. I've, I've done the math um, and that means, you know, all the little things like answering emails on my phone. I mean, you're const I'm constantly on. I'm constantly in the moment of working. I never really shut it off. You know, whether it's 9 o'clock at night, whether it's a Saturday and I get home from training, I'm always working. So I've, I've definitely spent some time adding up the hours and it's a ton of work and I yeah. think that a lot of people don't understand but the the other reason why I think it's so physical for me is that and Molly's the same way is I am adamant that I mark you know most of my own courses so oh. Molly is unplugging her headphones I think no no yeah I think uh, Molly unplug your headphones for a second <laughs> There we go. Can can you hear me okay, Kira? Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah, I, I think we uh I think we lost Molly's headphones. Go ahead and plug them back in, Molly. Okay, I did. There we go. Got it. Okay. okay. We're, all, we're all dialed in. Sorry, Kira. Oh, no worries. There could be much worse things happening. <laughs> <laughs> right, Molly, we bob and weave. That's a non issue. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh yeah. Y yeah. Go. Roll so, with the punches. Roll with the punches. <laughs> <laughs> that is like no big deal. Um, yeah. So mostly exhaustion from the phys physical aspect. Yeah. Like when I mark 50 mile courses, I'm out there for 12 hours. Um, so and I love it. I wouldn't choose doing anything else. I love my job, and I know that I'm good at it. It's my heart. It's my passion. But it's a physical job. Yeah, I I can only imagine. And you put on some of the best races in Southern California. Thank you. It shows. It shows. Um, now Molly, you are in it right now. You are deep in preparation because your race. Who's in El Moro, uh, 50K and 25K, I believe, yes? Yes. Those are coming up Saturday. 25K and 50K. Yeah, Saturday. so those races are yes. coming up Saturday. What is it? What is going through your mind right now? Like, what uh, Do you wish that you were not on the show and you were packing gift bags? Like, what is, uh, what is no, the... No, I actually... I'm, I'm happy to be on the show right now, although I have... The uh, week leading up to the race is just very um, detail-oriented where you have to have almost every day um, scheduled for, uh, for everything that needs to get done. Yeah. So that's kind of like when Kira was saying, you know, 400 hours, it's no joke. There's really no hour that you're not thinking about what you can do to better your race, mm -hmm. what you can do to better um, uh, anything that has to do with your race, your runners, the course, swag, all the above. So oh, I was swag, three, three, yeah. 3 a.m. Literally, I was awake on my phone um, on the internet looking for something because I woke up and had an idea. I was like, I need to go back to bed. <laughs> but that's the truth. I mean, you wake up, you go, oh, I need to do that, and then so you go on and try to figure it out. Yeah. Do the do the races haunt your dreams a little bit? Ah, uh, uh, yes. Yeah. The closer oh you get to them. Um, the worst and cure. You probably have had this happen too, where you've dreamt that you didn't show up. To the race? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> God, that 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 just happened to me too recently, and you literally cannot believe that your alarm didn't go off or you missed the exit, but you completely forgot to show up to the race. That's that, that is haunted. That's me. terrifying. It's like the the yeah. old dream. I used to be a server in a restaurant, and it was you know one of those haunting dreams you would have the night before a shift, where you had a thirty table section and you couldn't get to everybody at the same time. It's just like a terrible nightmare. Terrible. terrible. Yeah. So yeah, you that, should you should definitely show up on Saturday, Molly. I, I think that's that's a definite. Uh, uh, yeah, I, I, I you have those fears though that go through your mind that if I did not get up to get up to get to the race on time, who would take over? Who could I call and say, could you help me out? <laughs> My alarm didn't go off. <laughs> oh God, that would be <laughs> awful. So uh, we actually already have questions in the chat room from our live viewers. Thank you very much, guys, for tuning in live. From Go Eaters, this is a question for the race directors. Being a race director is pretty much a thankless job. What are the most annoying complaints you hear after an event? Kira, anything? Um, do we have, like, five hours? or? <laughs> sure, yeah, let's go. Yeah. Let's do it. Um, you know, I think probably, and I, and I say this um, with 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 heart, um, but I think one of the main biggest complaints that I would have is people, 
I've gotten emails that they lost a glove on the course and they want to oh, know. Man. I mean, very detailed stuff. So you, you're in charge of so many things. And the cleanup is just a ginormous feat. And people, um, you learn a lot about people as human beings. And they're, you know, pretty uh, pretty wrapped up in their their own worlds, which is fine. But they'll email you for, like, the littlest things. You know, they, they left a drop bag that had their four gels in it. And can you mail it to them? And... Those kind of things. I don't know if annoyed wow. is the word. J Jesse and I will just we laugh in our close circle of friends. Sometimes I, I, you know, we just laugh. What are you gonna do? But um, that probably be the top of my list. Like, yeah, I, uh, <laughs> yeah, those kind of emails. I can imagine you would get them and just be like, listen. I mean, you don't even you can't even respond to it because the reality <laughs> is there's nothing you can do about it. Like, I'm sorry you dropped the glove. Uh, next time, don't. I guess. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or, Molly, Molly, or bring a you? pair, or bring, or bring a pair that you don't care to lose. Yeah. 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 I mean, you can't really have too much connection to those things when you're out there. I think running that if you're gonna, you're, it's pretty possible that that's gonna happen. Yeah, and um, if you do have a close connection to something, you know, don't lose it. I think is, is exactly. Yeah, yeah, Molly. Anything for you after a race? Just people leaving, maybe their their drop bags and it might be goo that they left behind or they wanted to get their their half used um, bottle handheld and I hold on to them I mean I still have I think some of people's items from my first race back in 2010 Wow! <laughs> but they have not claimed it but I'm, I'm, I'm still holding on to it for them you just have a closet it. full of random bottles half full of hammers yes Recover right. Yes. Bottles. Yeah. Well, on the, right. on the flip side of that is that you know, I, if there's anything valuable, of course we save it and we put it in a box. And there's people that have left incredibly valuable things, and I don't know whose they are. You know, really, really expensive lights, a super nice pack, and it was just left. So I'll hold on to it. I hope they email, and I never get an email. But man, that one Walmart glove that they needed back, you better believe I'll get that email. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. So it's interesting. I have a I have a garage full of really expensive stuff. Maybe we need to, uh, you know, have a ginger running garage sale or something. Oh my God, we should totally do that. Do like an auction and then do we an give auction for charity or something like that. It would be hysterical. That's it a great really, idea. Really so uh, let me definitely ask this, uh, Kira. For you, I know that you you have designed some pretty epic courses in the Santa Monica Mountains. You know, Ray Miller, Leona Divide, uh, further north, Sean O'Brien this year. When you approach a race, uh, and specifically in this last year, Ray Miller, the course burned. Um, Point okay. Magoo had a terrible, terrible fire. Uh, I guess it was the middle of 2013 or early summer in 2013. It was and, May. Uh, it was May 3rd. I was actually on a plane to Miwok, getting on a plane to Miwok when I found out. But yeah, when the Ray Miller fire happened, it was. It was terrifying to watch from home and just hearing the news about it because we had just run that course months before and it's it's one of those courses you run you're like oh my god my mind is blown how does this exist on this planet you know um, so when you have something like that happen to a race that you have designed and put on for a couple of years how did you come back with the new idea for Sean O'Brien I mean did you go out and scout for new courses like how do you come up with a new race I think is uh, is really the, the prime question here. Well, I think you brought up two interesting things. Um, the first thing is how do you, for me, I had the Ray Miller fire happen, and then I had, you know, the Leona Divide ha fire happen. So I had two of my race courses that That's I, true, yeah. yeah, and a lot of people don't understand to build a race, it costs a lot of money. So you put not only put your heart and soul hours and hours and hours out there running, mapping the course, figuring out where aid stations are going to be, but building the website, putting a ton of money into advertising. So you put your heart and soul into it, and in a snap of a finger, you have an, you lose an event. And so I lost Sean O'Brien, then I lost Leona Divide, and in the loss of Leona Divide, I also lost Leona Valley Trail races. So I lost three oh. races in the span of a month. And, you know, I do what I've always done my whole life, was I kind of dusted myself off, and I fought. And mm -hmm. I was really hard for me. It was the hardest, actually, time in my life in the last few years that I've, I've been through. It was a really super hard time, but I had great friends. Molly, I have the love of my life, Jesse, and one of those great friends was Sean O'Brien. He's one of my very, very close friends, and we run a lot together. And he said, you know, I have this really awesome race that could replace Ray Miller. I have this great course, 
and he kind of laid it out to me. He sent me the maps. He put the aid stations together, and I said, dude, let's go run it. And I didn't even think I could get the permits, but, you know, I have a strong faith, and I prayed, and uh, the dots connected, and it all came together, and things just work out for the better. So, um, yeah, I was just really, I, I'm a really strong-willed person, and I pushed through it, and so, yeah. I mean, if the, uh, that just proves that, you know, no matter how much of a tough time we, we end up having to go through, you can always find some sort of light and come up with something pretty amazing. Sean O'Brien was amazing this year. Yeah. Um, really spectacular okay. and tough as nails course. Like, yeah. that. that is definitely a tough <laughs> course, and that makes it good. Uh, so I actually brought up a good point, too. And Molly, I want to talk to you about Who's in El Moro and how you created Who's in El Moro. Um, maybe you can also touch on this as well. But permitting. Kira, you mentioned permitting. That, in my mind... Just knowing logistics of filming in L.A. and being kind of the actor side of things and trying to get permits to film at different places, I can't imagine what you have to go through to get permits to run 500 or 1,000 people through some of these parks. Uh, Molly, have you run into any issues with permitting or anything like that? Like with who's in El Moro? Um, only issues I've had was they just have a lot of um, red tape that you have to go around, such as they want you to... Um, cross your T's and dot your I's on everything, especially the state parks for me. And it's fine, it's worth it, obviously, because I want, um, in order to have that permit, you have to have your race sanctioned, which is, I think, very important to have a race sanctioned um, to cover yourself. And then also to have your, um, your permit being, uh, is, is just a huge part of, of of your race, you don't really, it's not like it's a, um, it's not like it's not important, obviously it's very important to have your permit, but it, there's yeah. really not that many struggles that go along with it. it, you just have to do all your, make sure you have your sponsors, make sure you have your course, make sure you have all your, um, everything in order, basically. Yeah, and doing it all on time, right, meeting certain deadlines and stuff like that. Oh so yeah. For specific yeah. Time. Yeah. Kira, any nightmares or anything like that with permitting, especially going out in the Santa Monica Mountains? Um, yeah, most definitely. Um, I've hit a, a million bumps and struggles. Um, and <laughs> I have this great way of, of um, having friends that I run with that say, oh, my God, you have to put on a race here. And one of those people, again, in Griffith Park was Sean O'Brien. And he was like, you, ha you have to put on trail races here. And I was like, oh, well, I wonder how hard it is to get permits there. And lo and behold, I mean, it took like eight months before I was even able to sit down with the city council. And wow. um, it wasn't an easy feat, but I was, you know, I, I believe in fate, and I think that all things happen the way they're meant to happen. And I had a friend that um, knew Tom LaBange and made the right, you know, introduction, and now I have my races there. But is Griffith Park issuing a ton of races to anybody else? No. I know how blessed and lucky I am, and it's not easy to get permits. Um, you have to sit down with them, and just like Molly said, they really, when you come to any state park, national park, any city park, you you all, you have to have credibility, and that's key, or they're not going to even approve your permit. So, yeah. And it's getting harder. More and more events are popping up. Everybody wants to be a race director, and there's a lot of people that are not doing so well at it, and they're, you know, upsetting the wrong people, the right people, whatever you want to say, it makes it great for people like myself, Molly, and other great, great, other great race directors because we can keep putting on our great events and, you know, but they, they definitely have high standards and you have to really meet up to those, so, yeah. Yeah, I can imagine, I mean, I, I, you brought up uh, the point that made me instantly think of Badwater and what's been going on this year with Badwater especially, it's like, <laughs> That event has been going for so long and so well, and it's such a top-notch event. It was heartbreaking to hear that they've just hit this incredible roadblock. I don't know a lot of the specifics about it, and I can only imagine there's a lot of politics going on behind the scenes. But it's so frustrating to see an event like that go through such a transformation purely because of somebody putting up a barrier for no reason, for no real reason. Um, Absolutely. And that could happen to any of us at any time. I had barriers sure. this year with Leona Divide and had to, you know, a few weeks before the course make a few weeks before the race make a complete course change. Granted, that was due to fires, not like political bureaucracies, but mm -hmm. there's always, it's super scary. And Chris has been putting on bad water for many years, you know, and, and just what a top notch event. There's not a single, you know, hiccup that he's missed. And for whatever reason, 
So, yeah. Now, uh, someone brought up a good question in the chat room. Volunteers. In my mind, this has got to be the toughest part of the job. I don't know. Maybe it's not. But getting volunteers to be out at a race. I mean, you're, they're out there from 2, 3, 4 in the morning until well past the sunsets later in the night, especially for those longer races. How do you do it? Like, Do you offer incentives? Do you pay some volunteers? I guess that wouldn't be a volunteer then, but how do you, how do you get it? Molly, uh, for example, who's in Amoro this weekend? Uh, I think I think Molly is actually watching cartoons in the background. <laughs> I, I, <can't. laughs> she, I think she's <laughs> she has her music on. No, Molly, I have I have all of my goodie bags all lined up that I organized today with Kira, uh -huh. and my my dog just took them out. <laughs> <laughs> So oh yeah, it was, I was kind of watching a cartoon in another way. Can my we, dog, are we uh, able to see? Can I'll, we see this? I'll stop that right now. I won't go any further just because that was really kind of embarrassing that I just even said that. But um, <laughs> volunteers, on another note, volunteers have, have been, and Kira can probably even agree more than myself, for some reason, somehow, I have been blessed with volunteers. It, that is it's not a struggle to get volunteers. When it comes to these trail races, people are so willing to give back to the sport. It's yeah. unbelievable. It truly blows me away. I can I, I never have a problem with the volunteers. That's awesome. And I I wish I could pay my volunteers because they totally deserve to be paid. <laughs> right? For, seriously, <laughs> for standing out there and you know, and I get it. When you're racing and you're running through an aid station. Oh, we got a hiccup in the internet. Hiccup in the internet. They made, pl yeah, that they made plans to uh, mm -hmm. do other things that, um, but they're there to help make your race and make the runners' race a great day. So, anyways, I personally have had a really great experience having volunteers, and I'm, I'm, I'm. That's I'm so um, humbled by that. By I Mommy's. love hearing that. Yeah. That yeah. gives me much faith. Here, go ahead. Sorry. Yeah. You know, I was going to say, I mean, my volunteers are like a part of my family. I have from a runner circle. I mean, I absolutely, not only are they an amazing running store, um, holla, but they're like, <laughs> they're like my second family, and they are, they help me so much with all my Griffith Park events. But through mm -hmm. that, I've turned, you know, half of their little runner circle running runners. Molly's yelling at her dog. Um, I know, I hear it. I love it. <laughs> it, it into ultra runners. And so it's this incredible community. I have a lady that's become one of my closest friends, Karen Adams, who I've turned into an ultra runner. And she started out years ago. Um, she was president of the Valencia hiking crew. And they had this hiking crew out by Leona Divide. They helped in an aid station. And now they're like a staple of Leona Divide. And she really has become a super good friend of mine. So... It's just the volunteers are the core of my events, and they're everything to me. I, I can't even imagine if I didn't have all my volunteers. So, yeah, That's, I love I them. Love it. Oh, yeah. That's and, of course, true. the coyotes. Uh -huh. The coyotes are the best. So, yeah. I was going yeah. to bring, bring them up, too, because I feel like Jimmy Dean uh, and the, the whole gang, all of the coyote gang, seems to be all across the SoCal board as far as volunteering and doing aid stations and stuff like that. Oh, and they're beyond good. amazing. And Jimmy's, like, I mean, he's one of my best friends, too, and... God, I just love that guy and his wife, Kate. And, but the Coyotes are just, yeah, Jack Rosenfield. I mean, they're just, it's Chandra. Like, they're all just incredible human beings, always right there to help and support Kevin Chan. Mm -hmm. So what a community Jimmy's created. It's pretty awesome. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and that's what I love about the trail running community as well. And, you know, you find a crew, and they are dedicated, and they want to help out as much as possible. What do you yeah. think is the toughest part of the job? Um this can be across the board, it can be in the preparation stages, it can be during the event itself. What is the toughest part of being a race director, Molly? We'll start with you. Mm. Besides getting your bags uh, run over by your dog. Taken off by the dog. Mm -hmm. I think um, the toughest part of the job as a race director would be on race day, I feel like you have, for me personally, I put my my um, heart and soul into my race and for my runners that I feel like I'm, I feel my runners' um, pain, scares, fears, 
excitements. So probably the toughest part is me managing and me making sure that everybody is okay. That is probably yeah. my hardest job, and making sure that my my aid stations are up and running, and my medics are there, and my ham radios are there, and they they have connection. That's probably the hardest thing for me to. Not that it's hard; it's just more, maybe more worrisome for me. Because yeah. my 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 run, I call them my runners because I I feel like they're they're a part of me, um, and I don't even know all of them. I know a lot of them um, from coming back after the years. Mm -hmm. But I again, I I that's probably the hardest part for me is just on race day making sure everybody's okay. What about you? I'm, I'm a <laughs> Kira. What about you? What do you think is the toughest part? Um, I'd have to agree with Molly, and you know, just being an ultra runner like Molly is too. You really you care so much, but you know exactly what they're going through. Mm -hmm. And I put my heart so much in in my events, but race day is really. Stressful last year was 110 degrees at Leona Divide, and mm -hmm. um, we had some pretty bad emergencies. I mean, one was real bad, and it's really stressful to. And it's something I learned from Steve Harvey. But you just you have to stay really calm. In I mean, in a and excuse my mouth, but in a complete shit storm, and that's kind of. You can of say like, shit, Kira. You can. I'm gonna, <laughs> you can say shit. You can say shit. You can say anything you want. <laughs> okay. Well, okay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, but really, like, the world could be completely collapsing around you, and you just have to hold it together. So that's the hardest part. Um, besides all the, the physical part, too, you know, it's really a physical job. You have to remember each one of those aid stations, all the supplies and all that race equipment, and that has to get loaded up. That has to get driven to the race site. It has to get unloaded. So that part, so the physical part and then the race day, the stress, the worry. I, I just, I love my runners so much and I worry so much. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, I, now I want to get into some real, some real good juicy stuff. We talked a little yeah. bit about it before. Oh. This, I, know, I, I, I wanted to save it. I wanted to save it for the actual episode. <laughs> but when I'm looking at races, when I'm signing up for races as a runner and I look at the race fee, in my mind, I go, that's expensive. Uh, $130, $140 for a race. Uh, you know, you have you go through that mental phase of like, can I afford that? Is it worth it? What does this money go to? So what I want to ask is if, if you're paying a large race fee, or even if it's a moderate size race fee, as race directors, I finally have you here so I can ask you, help break down the costs. Uh, I know for a fact that that money doesn't all just go into your pocket. I, I just know oh. that. But some people oh, no. might not know that. So no, help no. break it down for the people out there who are watching and, and help them realize, okay, there's a lot more to being a race director than just taking people's money, putting it in a pocket, and giving a, a, a race shirt to people who finish. Help yeah. break it down. Here, here. Let's go to the start with Kira. Kira starts. Um, well, and I think Molly and I can both touch on this, so I'll touch a little, but we both put on high-end events, and I think there's a lot of, I think there's a small number of races out there that don't offer the, the kind of stuff that we do and don't put on the kind of events that we do, so maybe they are charging too much and pocketing more money, sure. but for an event like myself, any event I have, or like Molly's, um, no detail is ever looked, so it's very expensive from the race medal to the race day shirt to all the aid station supplies to the yeah. medics, to the permits, um, and the list goes on and on. The finish line food, you name it, I mean, it adds up. So if you look at a, a race entry fee of $100, you're looking at a race director making a very, very small amount of, you know, each one of those race entry fees. And yeah. for Molly and I, and especially me, I love my volunteers, I give out a lot of comp, comp entries to my you know, people that really spend hours volunteering, and we are not making a lot of money for anybody that thinks we are. And and I've gotten shafted and gotten some pretty nasty emails for people that have issues with me, even the fact that I make money doing what I do as a race director. Mm -hmm. And I love those people; they're awesome. Um, if I had no class, I'd post their their, their messages on Facebook. But um, <laughs> but but I but I keep rising above them. 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 Um, but my answer to that is that uh, nobody works for free. And yeah. I, I bust my ass. So, um, you know, if, if you want to go work for free, then go ahead. But um, I guarantee you're not going to do half the job I do, and you're going to want to get paid. So it's not Boom. a lot, but, yeah. Drops the mic. Here, lays it down. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love it. Molly, uh, what about you? Help, help break down race fees and, and what they go to uh, when you put on, like, who's in El Moro. 
Um, race fees for my race, um, and I actually have some. Oh, but uh, the Wi-Fi. There we go. Sorry, I keep going. It's um, <clears throat> in order to get sponsors. That's why I think I push so hard to get sponsors um, to help with my race because I want to make the experience for my runner so awesome. Yeah. And if I just had a race using the monies that I collect from entry fees, I would maybe be able to purchase a race shirt, a quality race shirt, Patagonia, and a medal. And um, that's probably it, realistically, wow. after paying permit fees yeah. and paying um, food fees, medic fees, time, the timers that are there, yeah. they need to be paid. Um, USA Track and Field to have your race sanctioned, you have to pay for that. Um, there's, there's so many different things that you have to pay for, and honestly, it's not really about the money. I think that if you really want to race a certain race, you will pay uh, the amount, regardless of what you get in return. Mm -hmm. For my race, I try to give back every penny um, it's not. It's not about for me right now because my race is so much smaller, and as I'm building it as I've gone in the past five years to make my race where it is today. Mm -hmm. That it's. Um, I'm more. I, I right now. I do eventually would love to make money, and I think one day I will make money. But I right now is money. My money goes back to my um, my runners to make sure that they have quality um, prizes. What because what I think for me. Doing a 50K is unbelievable, and I feel like everybody should be completely spoiled when it comes to that because yeah. it's a lot of work, and it's a lot of training, and it's a lot of blood, sweat, and tears. And if you don't – you, I, I just, I, and everybody knows this about me, that I am – I like to spoil people, and that's – it could be at a, a fault at times. But when it comes to my runners, I definitely um, – I don't mind spending the money that they paid because they earn – they make that money, and then they want to use it for towards a race. So. I I love it. I, I think that's great. It's nice to actually hear that. I mean, it sounds like you're barely breaking even. You know what I mean? As far as putting on this race and taking race fees and sponsorships, but you're you're giving back pretty much everything back to the runners. Yeah, I don't know and what I people expect as far as like if I'm going to spend a hundred dollars on a race, I don't expect you to hand me a hundred dollar check when I cross the finish line saying thank you for coming out and running my race. Like I don't I don't expect that. So the hundred dollars I spend, I definitely understand. One, you're getting like a fifty dollar race shirt. If it's Patagonia or a good quality, you know, race right. shirt, that's fifty dollars right there. So you're Ethan, spending another fifty dollars for food. Pa Patagonia is the only quality shirt. <laughs> well, this I, one's pretty good quality. I, I'm totally teasing. I know, but you're. I mean, you're right though. You know, you're, you're so you're spending fifty bucks on a on a really good quality shirt that's been customized with the logo. Then you have food at all the aid stations. Then you have a party at the finish line, whether it's food or music or, or whatever happens to oh, be yeah. a bunch of people. You have a medal. It's a big. It's a big party. That that's it's a by big my. Party. It is a party, and I think that it, it, everybody should be celebrated for doing what they just did. They just spent months training, literally working around things, trying to make it happen, trying to stay focused. And if they can get through that, yeah, I want to throw them a party yeah. on that day of the race, and that's what it's all about for me. Is that I'm throwing them this big party and. It's kudos to them for doing what they did because it's awesome. And you know, I, I the only races too. that I've that I've run that I've never you know met the race director. Yet, let, I mean, a race director that's like unheard of. I think, especially in like road races, is to even really meet them. But because um, it's because they have such a huge field and they have so much stuff going on. I mean, they have thousands and thousands of people, which I totally get. Um, but that's I try to make my race a little bit more personable, where I can actually. Meet everybody that that runs my race and finishes my race, and yeah, know that I if I can. What I admire about both of you ladies is that you are at the finish line of your races. Yeah, uh, Kira's Kira, the same races, Yeah, same yeah. way. Every same one way. of the Kira races that I finish, it's like she's there and she's yeah. there all day. It doesn't matter if you're the last. All day. That finish line. It's it, and I love that. It's true. Because I love uh, everybody. Will... Like I just love the ultra running community, and for me, it's like I cry at the finish line. Like I care so much about the runners. And I know so many of them, so to put the medal around them is like the most awesome thing. Yeah. It's so it's such a rewarding job. 
And I have to point out that Kira's actually that. sitting at the finish line in the woods right now. You can tell that she's oh, sitting in the woods. <laughs> she's waiting for people to finish her next race in November. <laughs> Putting in all the hours. What were you gonna say, Molly? I interrupted. Sorry. Um, let me try to remember. I... <laughs> the dog is trampling her, her, her. It her goes in bag. and out really fast. Um, well, I want no, to point out, Molly, uh, in the chat room. Wait, I remembered Ethan. Okay, go, I remember. Go, go, go. go. <laughs> back to, <laughs> back to the point. Even though we don't physically run the race that day. I do feel at the very end that I just ran a race too. Like you are physically exhausted. And I always say, like, oh, I'm so hungry. I'm so hungry. I'm so tired. And I'm like, from what? I didn't even run. I, I, but it's true. You just get physically exhausted from being there at that finish line and giving everybody a hug. And But it's worth it. It's worth every penny and every hour that we put into it. So I there, believe it. I bet it. you forget to eat. I bet it's pretty Completely. easy. Completely. Yeah. yeah. Especially yeah. if people are crossing the finish line, because you want to be there for every one of them. So eating, I can imagine, is that's second. why I'm also thankful for Sally McRae because she's been like my right hand girl for the past few years, where she has yeah. handed me food. Molly, eat like a stick of mango strip in my mouth. Like, <laughs> take a bite. Take a bite of this. Like she literally is like on me. Have you eaten, Molly? Did you drink anything yet? Come on, you need to eat. Love so, it. You, Shout out to Sally, a regular, uh, a regular on Ginger Runner Live. She's yeah. got, I think she might uh, actually be watching right now and laughing at home. Oh God, laughing. Well, she, yeah, she knew that I had some. <laughs> I won't go there, but. <laughs> uh, I do want to say, Molly, that uh, someone in the chat room, Ra Raul, says I just signed up for the Who's in El Moro race this weekend. So you have someone signed up already, running Yay! your race this Saturday. Uh, Yay, which Raul! Is pretty, which is pretty dang awesome. And Cody Van Rokel says uh, Who's in El Moro is a great course. It's beautiful, and uh, I totally agree. I was just down there for the first time ever. This uh, yesterday. Yesterday. Running, running the trails with Sally, and it was for the first time down there. I'm like, oh my god! Of course, a race has to be here. It's beautiful down here. Um, so I can't wait to see I'm, it this weekend. I'm really yeah, really excited. I'm, I'm it's supposed to be beautiful weather. Beautiful no, also, weather. It's perfect. Right? It's cooling off. It's it's great SoCal weather. Those are and our Molly, trails. Don't go ahead, Kira. I was just oh, gonna say you, those are our trails. Yeah, you live down there, right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so Spend awesome. many hours on those trails. Molly, speak, you brought up road racing. I have to commend you because you just got a huge marathon PR. So we have to give you a, a, a road marathon PR round of applause. Thank you. You're so um, sweet. <laughs> but what I wanted to ask you about that is yeah. running a road fashion. race. Yeah, in, in Molly fashion. Running a road race is much different than running a trail race. But how, as a race director, did you feel that the race was different? And when you ran it, you were like, oh, these people are making this mistake or this mistake or... Can you learn anything from a road race? A big from, one, like a big road race. You know, uh, the Orange County Marathon was twenty-two, I think, thousand runners. Sure. Um, wow. Compared to like my two hundred runners that I have at my race, so yeah, I'm completely, you know, flabbergasted by what they probably have to do in order to get ready for that race. I, I'm, I'm completely, I admire them. I personally enjoyed the race completely yesterday. I was, I felt like I was in my own little world. There was kind of so much to look at because there were so many people around, which I'm not used to seeing because on the trails, yeah. the, you go miles and miles where you never see somebody. So there's, when you see somebody out there, you're like, huh, they're like passing me, I'm passing them. I'm all, I was completely entertained all the time. So maybe that's why I PR. It's like I completely was <laughs> like, oh, I'm going to catch that person up there. Oh, I'm going to. I thought it was a great race. I had, I again, I had a great time, definitely. Now, Kira, uh, do do you do road races? Have you done road nope. races? I'm sure nope. in the past, or not at all. You're uh, over it. Um, I've I've done some in my in the past, yeah, um, like long time ago, but no. Are you no. able to take any sort of lessons from maybe races that you've run? Uh, because you are a race director, you both are runners as well, which I think adds a huge benefit to to you as a race director because you basically know what we're going through as runners. So any races that you've run where maybe you've been able to learn something or valuable lessons from other races that you've been able to fix or incorporate into your own? Yeah, um, a huge um, in, or a huge mentor to me are two race directors that I think are amazing that I've learned um, a lot from would be like Scotty Mills. His events are 
unbelievably amazing. And yeah. um, through the years volunteering, before I was ever a race director, I would help Scotty a ton when he used to have Noble Canyon 50K and the first year of San Diego 100. And the same goes with Steve Harvey. So, you know, they're managing 100 mile events, and that's a whole different ball game. It's not something, not that I want to be quoted on this, but that I ever really think I want to do. And I have mad respect for that. So mm -hmm. um, there's been a ton of great and amazing things that I've seen them do that I've learned from them. Um, so yeah, a lot. And I've also been at a lot of events and where I'm like, wow, this is like not okay. And it makes me realize, you know, uh, um, just the things that I would never want to do and, the, and, and things that are important, you know. I, I really believe that a runner should get what they paid for and it should be a well-organized event, you know. The runner shouldn't be worried about getting lost and on and on, you know. And I don't, it's hard work, but I don't think it's rocket science. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, Molly, we have a question in the chat room for you. Uh, <laughs> Molly, will there be a second Who's in El Moro race again this fall? I ran OC Marathon last week and can't make it for the May 10th event. Just wondering. Yes, it'll be October 11th. So you do it twice a year, uh, same distances, so 25K, 50K? Yes. <clears throat> I originally had my race on um, one, every May, and then I decided that I was going to switch it to October. And at the same time, I added a 25K distance. It was originally only a 50K. And then I had quite a few people email and contact me wanting to see if I would put on a 25K distance to do because my race is an out and back. So I decided to add the 25K. Meanwhile, I had to said that I was going to switch my course, my race to have it in October. Then once I did that, people were, were calling me saying, whoa, whoa, wait, you mean your race is not in May anymore? So it kind of became an October-May race kind of by popular demand in a sense where they didn't want me to stop my May race, but then there was others that October worked better for them. So I have it now too. It's my second year that I've had it two times a year. That's awesome. So you have the one coming up this Saturday and one again in October. Yes. And uh, where can people go to sign up for Who's in El Moro? www.whosinelmoro.com That was easy. <laughs> Made it super easy. Uh, Kira, your next race is coming up November. Um, you just did uh, Sean O'Brien. You just did Leona Divide. So your next series is coming up um, in November. It's the Griffith Park Trail Series. Yeah, so it's my Griffith Park. Uh, we call it the Hollywood Rockstar Trail Series. Yeah. And yeah, and the Griffith Park Trail Half Marathon is on Saturday, and then the Griffith Park Trail 10K is the very next day. So if you do both races back to back, you get a third medal, and it's a super super fun series. So yeah, they're great events. The half marathon is super tough. Metal. It yeah. is tough. It is it tough. Is super tough. Yeah. I, uh, I ran awesome. some of it. Um, I saw people who had ran it most recently and was like, oh, wow, I, I run Griffith a lot, and I didn't realize there was a half marathon course through there. So I kind of saw some people's tracks, and I tried to run it. And it's just tough. It's tough. Yeah. doable, but it, it's going to rock you. It's going to take you on a ride and then spit you out all chewed up and gnarly. It's great. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, do you have any advice for to be race directors, people who are maybe thinking about putting on their own race. I've been getting some emails lately from people who are, they're like, I want to partner up with you. Let's put on a race together. And I'm like, oh, I don't know if I can do that. But for people who are coming up with races, any advice to them on how they can put on events at the caliber and level of yours? My one, my, my bit of advice is I would say uh, follow your heart. Do do it from the heart, and you will have a very successful, I think, event, and be and and please a lot of people too. I love it, Kira. Yeah, it's simple. That's that's totally that's awesome. I agree with that. Um, and I think just be patient. You know, it, it takes time for events to build and to grow. And if mm -hmm. your heart's in it, just like Molly said, um, just be patient with it and do a super good job. Don't don't take any shortcuts. Give 110 percent put on a great event, and give it a couple years, don't expect, you know, 400 people to show up on the first year. You know, it's just not going to happen. So, yeah. Yeah, love it. And Kira, people I People wanna... will adapt. Say it again, Molly? I, said, I was just going to say, people will adapt to, and, and, and I think appreciate your race, because I think each, each race director has their own unique way of having, being a race director. 
There are yeah. certain things that Kira does that people absolutely love and thrive on for her races. Like, I absolutely, I will always do one of Kira's races. Vice versa, there might be something that I do that somebody might be like, absolutely, you know, Molly does this or whatever it might be. And it's just our own different individuality where that's kind of us. So I think that if your race is you, as a race director, you can't go wrong. And it's, and it's coming from your heart. It's a win-win completely. I agree with that. Um, having run a series of different events over the last year from all sorts of organizations, race directors, and etc., that's one of my favorite parts is knowing kind of um, uh, each race director's little spin, little thing that they do that no one else does. Um, I love the swag. Like, Kira, like your races are known for their dynamite swag. Like, you finish that race, you're going, I'm going to get a kick-ass medal. I'm going to get a kick-ass shirt. I'm going to get, like, a gift bag. But it's good stuff. It's not just, you know, dollar store trinkets. It's quality totally. Patagonia-like gear. Uh, James Varner just ran the Gorge 50K. And James Varner has, like, the pizza oven at the finish line, which has these yeah. handcrafted pizzas. and. He doesn't give you a medal. He gives you the high five. Yeah. That, that's like his thing. You know, he like gives you the high five and a hug because you earned that. Um, there's all these different little thumbprints. You know, like I love, I love race directors that put their thumbprint on. That's that's really great. And Kira, right. I know that you you ran Zion. I know that you had an injury. Are you recovering? You've been running and. Yeah, I have, um, and it's not a it's not a new injury. I've I I have a I've had history with uh, with my hip and. I just took a bad fall, and um, Molly was there carrying me with Jesse, and um, it was just very painful, and collectively, we made the right decision. Um, I came back. Uh, I have a rolfer named Joshua Malpas, who's amazing. Um, he works on me, and he kind of healed my body and worked on me a few times and put everything back in place, and um, I've been running, and I feel amazing. And um, So I pulled out a San Diego 100, and I'm running Pocatello 100K in Idaho that weekend. Hell yeah. Nice. So my, yeah, my friend uh, and teammate Luke Nelson, a Patagonia teammate, is a race director. So just kind of changed my whole uh, dynamics. And Zion was a wake-up call for me. I love running in the mountains, and I'm just going to stick to that. Um, so Zion, there was a lot of things that just were – I wasn't in it mentally, and, you know, it, it affected me. So, um, yeah, I'm feeling good. I'm feeling healthy, and I just need to take care of my body and hip and not fall on it. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, I mean, that's easier said than done. I took a terrible spill last weekend as uh, so my uh, Sally was there and witnessed it. And then moments later, yeah. Sally fell and, you know, yeah. hurt herself. So it's like falling happens, and unfortunately uh, it can cause some damage. But that's awesome to hear that you're healing up. Uh, yes, I love that. You. That's great news. <laughs> that's that's great you. news for us SoCal, uh, yes. SoCal runners. So here comes the fun part of the show. We've uh, we've talked to these ladies. We've gotten to know them as race directors and kick-ass trail runners. But now I get to ask them some questions during a little segment that I do with new guests called the Quickie Question Quiz. Here's what happens, ladies. You might not be familiar with this, but I have a series of questions. I'm going to ask them rapid fire, and uh, you answer them as quickly as possible. We'll go in order. So we'll go... Uh, I'll ask the question, Kira, you can answer it, and then Molly, you'll answer it, and I'll ask the next question. Are you ready? Oh, my God, yeah. Okay. Okay. They're, they're very ready. easy questions. They're very easy questions. Uh, divide 3, multiply by 20, then to the derivative of... No, it's definitely not that. Oh! Um, no, I'm not <laughs> I was like, wait, let me go get my son. Hold on. <laughs> yeah, okay, I so only Kira. said divide. I was like, my calculator. <laughs> no, not doing it. Okay, first question. Mom. Kira, what was your first race? San Juan Trail 50K. First tr ultra. Molly, what was your first race? Nike Women's Marathon. Nice. Both very good races. Best trail that you have run, Kira? Oh, Ray Lakes Loop in up in uh, Sequoias. Yosemite. Nice. Molly? I'm going to say Marin Headlands. Both very good choices. I haven't. What was the loop again that you said, Kira? Ray Lakes Loop. Ray Lakes Loop. Okay. It's, it's Those, unbelievable. I love the sequoias, and it's up there oh. uh, near Yosemite. I love that area, so I'll have to, have to look into that. And the Marin Headlands are fantastic. Dogs or cats? Yeah. Kira, dogs or cats? Dogs. Molly? 
<laughs> dogs. <laughs> Despite the fact that all of her race bags have been knocked over, she's still saying dogs. <laughs> yes. Kira, first pet. Uh, uh, a dog, a little poodle. Molly, what was your first pet? A D-O-G. <laughs> <laughs> I think there's a bit of a delay. Uh, I know. <laughs> I, can't tell if, I can't tell if Molly is just listening to music and, and tuning out or if she's actually listening to no, me. So I'm, 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 like I'm trying animal. not to laugh, but, but our, first, our first animal was a dog and named it D-O-G. <laughs> so, oh, okay, okay, you were being serious. She was being dead serious. <laughs> I love it. Dead okay, serious. Kira. Your favorite post-race indulgence, either as a runner or as a race director. Favorite post-race indulgence. Um, a really, really good glass of Justin's Cabernet. Nice. Yeah. Molly. I'm sorry, you kind of cut out. Can you ask the question again? <laughs> what is What is your favorite post-race indulgence? Oh, um, ginger beer. Very good answers. I, I didn't even ask if either of you were having a drink tonight because I'm drinking some delicious audible ale from Red Hook Brewery. Uh, but I bet Molly's not... drunk. <clears throat> yeah, she is. <laughs> I know. <laughs> your current, your oh, current no. running in, what, what are you currently running in? Um, shoes? Yes. Uh, my Patagonia Everlongs. Nice choice. Recently reviewed by the Ginger Runner. Very nice choice. Great review, by the way. I, Thank you. I really, really love those shoes. I've blown through about six pairs. So I need another pair. Wow. I absolutely need another wow. pair. They're awesome. I love them. Yeah, love Molly, them too. What is your uh, current shoe choice? Uh, my current shoe choice has just recently switched. I've always been a Brooks girl, Ooh. but I know always. But I just recently tried the Nike Wild Horse, which I loved and love. And I also just tried the Kiggers. And that's what I ran Leona in last weekend, which were awesome. And the I like Wild it. Horse, I ran uh, Griffith Park and I loved them too. Those are both great and shoes. Actually ran the, and actually ran in the OC Marathon yesterday, and, that was, and I didn't even notice that it was a trail shoe. <laughs> I was going to say, I saw a picture of you that you posted today where you were running the marathon in trail shoes, and I was like, she got a PR and in trail shoes? Well done. And I love I that know. you pronounce it Tigger, because it sounds like Tigger. It is. It's my cartoon again. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, Kira, Justin Bieber or Robin Thicke? Oh, neither. <laughs> yes. Best answer. Je Molly. Jesse Haynes. Robin Thicke. <laughs> Robin Thicke. And, uh, and oh. Kira said her new fiancé. Oh, yeah. Good yeah. choice. Uh, and finally, who is your favorite ginger? You, baby. Yeah. Molly? Ginger runner. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Both correct answers. And that is the quickie Yay. question quiz. Great job, lady. Uh, it wasn't so quickie question quiz. It was more quickie Kira paused Molly question quiz. Molly drinking beer quiz. <laughs> I, I, was having, I was having a little bit of uh, internet difficulty. Yeah, that's true. Uh, there's been a bit of a delay. FYI, so the ginger beer is non-alcoholic. It's truly ginger beer. The stuff you get at Trader Joe's? Yes. 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 <laughs> Kira, do you want to just answer Molly's questions from now on? I, I, I know how much internet... she loves those ginger beers. She, like, she could. Favorite. Yeah. They're my they are, favorite. They're yeah. very, very good. They're very, very tasty. Well, I very so much appreciate good. you ladies uh, joining us tonight. It's It's been awesome to talk to you a, a bit about the job that you do, the, the thankless job. Um, you work so hard to put on these great races. I encourage those of you who are watching live to sign up for these races. Any of Kira's races, any of Molly's races are going to be top-notch. And they're going to bring you to Southern California, and we might get to see each other and run these same races. So I, I would love that as well. Before we go, I, I like to do yeah. this segment uh, <clears throat> each and every week. It's it's fun for me. Uh, I appreciate you guys sending me your stories. It's a little bit of run inspiration. Hmm. So this is where I get to uh, read stories that you guys have sent me about your stories dealing with running and uh, how maybe it has changed your life and for the better. And tonight we are reading a story from. Let me pull it up right real quick. 
Uh, we're reading a story from Chris Rush, who's been a longtime supporter of Ginger Runner. Chris has uh, been tuning into Ginger Runner Live and commenting on videos and, and Facebook posts and stuff like that, so thank you, Chris. Here is his story. Here's my story in a nutshell. When I started running back in 2011, I weighed 275 pounds. Three years, two half marathons, and a 50K later, I am now down to 221 pounds, and I want to get below 200 in the next few months. Running has changed my life, thanks to everyone who has helped me get here. It's a short story, but it's... It, I feel like it's too common. People find running and it changes their life for the better, and I absolutely love it. So congratulations, Chris. And an update to last yeah, week's Chris. Run Inspiration. Uh, Chris Bull, who we read his story, and he was running his very first marathon after years of training. He ran it this last weekend and ran it in an amazing time. He finished it. He has a medal around his neck. It is awesome. So congratulations to both Chris's. Great job to you guys. Uh, Good so job. once again, Kira and Molly, That's thank awesome. you so much for joining. It is awesome. I love hearing that kind of stuff. Oh. So, uh, Kira and Molly, thank you so much for joining me. Kira, where can people find you on social media, and where can they uh, find your trail races? Like, uh, is there a website and stuff like that? There so. is. So social media, I'm at, at Kira Henniger on Twitter, Instagram, Kira Henniger. You can find my website, kirahenniger.com, and it has links to all of my races. So all you got to do is Google Kira Henniger. My blog is kirahenniger.blogspot. So... Not too bad, not too hard. No, not at all. Easy. Yeah, yeah. Easy to find. Okay. Molly, where can people find you? <laughs> um, <laughs> www.whosdenomore.com <laughs> <com. laughs> or Facebook, Molly Kasu and Weem Trail Races on Facebook and Instagram, Molly Kasu Weem Trail Races. Perfect. Or you can Google Molly Kasuf. <laughs> You'll or, find or me. Google Molly Kasuf. Uh, these two yeah. ladies are just a delight. I, I am happy to know them. I'm happy to have them on the show. You are both invited back anytime. And uh, uh, thank any additional you. questions. Thank you. Yeah, of course. If you have any additional questions for these ladies, stick around for the post show because you can ask everything in the chat room. Basically, we're going to rip through the chat room and, and ask anything that you might have of these ladies. So uh, stick around. We'll see you guys in the post show. I am, of course, The Ginger Runner. You can find me on all the social networks on Twitter at The Ginger Runner, Facebook, Facebook.com slash The Ginger Runner, over on Instagram at Ethan Newberry, and YouTube.com slash The Ginger Runner, which is where you are right now. So I hope you subscribe because we're here every single Monday live at 6 p.m. Pacific, and we're doing reviews and videos. I say we, but it's me. I don't know why I say we. Uh, doing race videos and review videos every single week, dropping Thursday and or Friday. So we'll see you guys next Monday for sure. And I'll drop another video review at the end of this week. Stick around for the post show. We'll be right back with more Kira and Molly. <laughs> Yay! Great show, ladies. That was Yay! awesome. That was so awesome. Uh, it was so much fun. I, Molly, I'm so sorry. I think there's just like a three-second delay for some reason for the internet to get from where I live down to Orange County. It must have taken an additional three seconds. Uh, so I apologize. I thought so much. <laughs> no, it's okay. It was hilarious because I would ask a question. I was. I know. You sit there, and then you I would swear hear it. I wasn't waiting. <laughs> no, I know. I was um, not okay. waiting. I, I was I was replying, but a couple times I completely missed yeah. the question, or I missed what you guys were doing. Where it was, it was there was nothing there, but you guys were like still pictures, and I was like, oh god, oh, no. I'm only keep yeah. it together. <laughs> oh, so, go with it. Totally fine, because we could still hear you for most of it. So that was it was great. Okay. Um, okay, so I'm going to kind of kind of rip through the chat room here. We have people still watching. We have a good 80 or so people watching currently for the post show. So. Um, if you guys have any questions for Kira or Molly about race directing as a, as a job or as a passion or a hobby, um, maybe some of the races that they put on specifically, ask them in the chat room now. The chat room updates every 20, 30 seconds or so, so we're going to kind of rip through. I'm going to scroll back here. Uh, yeah, here. I think this is where I picked up. We have Heather Krug in the chat room. Heather is awesome. Um, Kira has a great Patagonia race shirt, says Heather, which is true. I still wear my Ray Miller long sleeve and uh, my Leona Divide 50-50. I love that shirt. Those are great. Thank you. Race directors, any thoughts of races in Aliso Woods or Laguna Wilderness, coast area, 
or is the OC parks too hard to work with or put on an event? Um, I had met actually with Elisa Woods and they are the ranger there. I had approval to put on a half marathon there. Um, mm -hmm. They are some of the nicest people I've ever met. But there, there's a lot of mountain bikers in Elisa Woods, like to the point where it's even hard for us to run in there. And so their issue is they're afraid of a mountain bike, biker taking out a runner. And so they were open to letting me use like the outer flat trails, but none of the good trails. And it really was just a mountain biking issue. And so it just didn't work out. But they're great. And, you know, it, yeah, it, it just... There's too many. It's too small of a concentrated park, and it really is a mountain biking haven. So I don't know how that could work. So. Yeah, that's. I guess that's a tough, tough call because you yeah, safety is a huge concern in that case, huh? Because I talked to um, uh, Gary Robbins who puts on the Squamish 50 miler, and last year the course hasn't changed, but the course runs through some of the most epic mountain biking routes up there in that territory, and when you're running the race you see signs everywhere that say caution mountain bikers bombing down death could be imminent you know oh yeah so they try to work pretty closely with the mountain bike community up there but I can imagine that's pretty difficult yeah and 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 I have my races in LA so that kind of for me you know but Molly's like the queen of Orange County and I, I've really been trying to talk her into creating a like a 50 mile that would maybe t look at her touch some yeah. trails in Laguna Coast and I don't think if anybody could get the permits, it would be Molly. So to to finish on that, and I'll let Molly take it over. No, I don't have any plans to do that. I'm not going to do that. But hopefully, Molly will. <laughs> Molly, what do you think? Is that in the future? Oh. <clears throat> um, I like to expand my um, my choices in the trails around Orange County. Um, where exactly? I don't know. I'm I'm kind of looking into that at right now. Um, so we'll see. We, I you know, I don't know. I'm trying to trying to grab Kira to come along with me though too. So we got some work to do on the trails. Yeah. Who knows what will what, what will happen? Wow. Uh, George Katsakara says, "Okay, okay. What are you drinking, Ethan? Beers or big gulps? Oh, you guys know George. George, I was drinking. What up, George? Uh, Mountain hobo." In my hobo, I was drinking Red Hook, and then this is not a big gulp. It's just a big gulp cup, and it's water. I just I'm trying to hydrate because yesterday I got I got my ass handed to me by Sally on the local Orange County trails. It was hot. It's okay. Sally would hand us all our ass. So yeah, she's pretty yeah. much a monster. She's a monster. <laughs> uh, let's see, trail racer, trail yeah. race directors give a ton of value for the money. Look at uh, R and R races, which I believe is rock and roll. Look at rock and roll races. You get hydrant water and maybe a fortune cookie. Thank you, Kira and Molly, for the race opportunity. Yeah, it'll be a great day when people stop signing up for rock and roll races. Let's move on. I agree. <laughs> I have nothing but horror stories. So. Yeah, so do a lot of people, and there's no excuse for that if you're listening. Management from Competitor Magazine, and I think it's okay to be honest. Like, there's They're charging a lot of money, and it's sad. So... Anytime anyone tells me that they're running an R&R &R event for the first time, like maybe it's the first marathon, I tell them not to. I'm like, no, don't do it. Just don't. And then, yeah. you know, I have three or four stories I can relate to them. The most recent run-in with them, and I'm happy to say this live and, and online, is they stole one of my photos. <clears throat> they stole one of my photos without even asking permission. And then someone, one of my fans, one of my awesome fans, sent me the link saying, hey, look, your photo is here. And uh, I called them out on it, wow. and they never apologized. And they took it down, but they never apologized. And I was like... I'm done with you guys. Yeah. Uh, these ladies also look out for your health and safety by bringing the ultra medical team to their races. That's right. You guys, you ladies definitely yes. do that. I love that. Yes, yeah, definitely. Every, like, again, our, both of us, I can, I can speak for myself, but I think I can also chime in for Kira too, but everybody's safety is our number one priority. Yeah, the ultra medical team is awesome. Nick Nadell has done an amazing job putting that together. What a great guy he is, man. Yeah. Actually, Nick uh, Nick Nadell yes. is in the chat room. I agree. Nick. Oh, yeah. hi, Nick. Hi, Nick. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, yeah, have you guys ever run into some serious issues? You mentioned a little bit from Leona. I mean, we don't obviously have to say names or anything, but does it has some pretty nasty stuff happened out there? Yeah. 
Um, is there anything that we can do as runners to avoid that kind of stuff, or is it sometimes unavoidable? I don't know. That's kind of a touchy subject because, um, like, the ultra community is really tight knit, and we all yeah. know each other. And I just say <clears> that <throat> meaning if something happened to one of us, you know, I keep hearing, you know, man collapses, woman collapses, woman just died in Colorado from yeah. at, a, at a half marathon, and. Um, there's a lot of newbies coming into this sport, and I actually sat down. Um, one of my teammates, Donnie Hornsby, who helped me uh, coach the, my team and training team, we had a big discussion about upping the requirements for Leona Divide, just you know, for the 50 mile, like, and maybe having a little bit of a board and a panel for that race. And same with Sean O'Brien, um, because if something does happen, it's just going to take one time, and and it's really scary. So um, I. And everybody wants to run their first ultra, you know, but it, it's, uh, that's, like, interesting topic to bring up. I, I don't know. I can imagine. Yeah, we don't, we don't have to touch on it too, too hard right now. Yeah. I always wonder about that because you hear rumors, you hear stories, and it's, it, it does send a little bit of a chill up your spine just thinking that could be me or, you know, that could be anybody out there. So um, it's Absolutely. good to know that there is a professional medical team on site for your races yeah. that are there. You know, they're there to make sure that everyone is okay. Yeah. They keep going it's very today. comforting. It's very yeah. comforting. Yeah. Um, was the number of volunteers the same? This is from Z uh, Xavier de Lesuluc. I think I pronounced that wrong. Was the number of volunteers the same between summer run events and other season run events? So, for example, Leona Divide is, I would consider Leona kind of a summer, late spring event because it does get pretty hot. This last time, I don't think it was very hot at all, but uh, that's a with the hot temperatures last year, summer event, do you have different numbers of volunteers out there for that event compared to something that in the cooler months? Um, no, you know, and I don't have any summer events, and for that reason, I would never put on a race in any month, like, from July to September. I'm not, okay. like, trying to knock any race directors that do, but um, I would just never have a 50-mile race in the middle of August. Granted, I love Angeles Crest, and that's in the middle of August, but that, to me, is really scary. Um, and so, I don't know, like, Leona was hot last year, but normally it's it's not a super hot race. So, gotcha. as far as volunteers not wanting to come out because of heat, that's not something I usually have to worry about. So. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. Um, Molly, any uh, this is from Go Eaters. Molly, any thoughts of reversing the course for May and October so it's different, though it is nice to end on the little bridge, so maybe not a good idea. Um, well, actually, my race, the 50K is an out and back, so they actually do get to run the race reverse the same day. Okay. But, but I get, get what they're saying now about having it reversed. Um, and actually, when El Moro redid the, the uh, El Moro parking lot, I, it wasn't up to me. It was, it was they, they told me where I had to start the race. So that's why my race is started on the bridge and it finishes on the bridge. Gotcha. Again, there's a lot of um, red tape at the state park that I have to abide by. Got it. So it's those kind of rules. Uh, let me just refresh here because, yeah, this, the chat room doesn't quite refresh quick enough. Um, you know, uh, the other thing, too, for me, for my 25K distance, I have to have my runners finish at the same place. So my 25K and my 50K runners do have two different starting areas, but they all finish at the same area because my 50K is an out, turn around, and they go back, and my 25K start where they turn around and they run to the finish. So they're gotcha. all in the same finish area. Here's a yeah. great question. This is from Michael Southworth. Someone asked earlier, uh, so maybe it was from someone else earlier in the chat room, but what is the best way to thank an RD after a race? Any input? This is a great question. I would love to know. Wait, what, I'm sorry. I, you, you cut out. What was that? Sure. What is the best way to thank, and re thank a race director after a race? Any input? Like, what's the best way to thank you? Um, you know, just an email. Like, there's nothing. Like, I've gotten emails, thank you emails that have made me, like, cry because mm -hmm. I care so much about my job. And just that, just a, like a really awesome email, you can't even put a price on it. It means the world. Because after an event, unfortunately, too, I get, you know, the other kind of emails. Um, and there's just those type of people in the world. So, and for the most part, those are those are rare. 
but then when you get 20 thank you emails, 40 thank you emails, and it, it just brightens your whole day. And then one time my friend Thomas Reese brought me a really good bottle of wine, and that was pretty rad. So, um, wine. <laughs> Love it. Yeah. Same thing for you, Molly, just uh, dropping you an email or dropping you a bottle of wine. Um, thanking me, I think, for, my, for myself, is them um, having a smile on their face, crossing that finish line, proud of themselves, of their accomplishments, and coming back to my race. That is the biggest thank you for me. There you go. That's, yeah, going back and signing up again. I was so bummed that I couldn't run Leona again this year because I was in Big Sur. So I wasn't able to come back and, and get my revenge on that course that ate me up and spit me out. But uh, I will be back for sure, Kira. So expect it. Expect the ginger to be back on those trails. Yeah. And it'll be, a, you know, it's 46 miles of the Pacific Crest Trail now. So it's, it's, it's so gorgeous. epic and beautiful. It's it, gorgeous. gorgeous. Awesome. It looked yeah. awesome. I'm so Amazing. jealous that they got to Amazing. run the new course this year. Oh, so cool. There was snow... It was snow. What? Yeah, it was snowing. It was snow. Yeah, it was awesome. It was Sold. so pretty. Sold. Honestly, I, that such a fun, fun course. Loved it. Uh, in the chat room, George Katsakaris. I, I, am I pronouncing that right? You ladies know him. Katsakaris? Yes. Yes. Question to both ladies. Crunchy or creamy peanut butter? Oh, crunchy. <laughs> George. I'm gonna have to say creamy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's a difference of opinion. Oh, it's a it's a fight. They're in a fight. <laughs> Can I say no, I prefer, I'm a lover, I not prefer a sun, sunflower seed butter? Do I have to have? There you go. Butter? Okay, there you yeah. go, George. <laughs> it's uh. It's Actually, George, I prefer peanut M and M's, so it could be crunchy. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> uh, and I also wanted to say for uh, to, to those of you who are still watching live that this will be a podcast. Um, I'm just it, it's a bit of a, an additional process to turn oh. these videos into podcasts. So I will uh, be doing that for the rest of the night, actually. I'm, I'm going to be locked down and trying to convert everything into a podcast. So those of you who wow. like to run with podcasts, you'll be able to do that. So you'll be able to listen to oh. Kira and Molly while you run, which is you know, oh, the best thing ever. Wow. Should we sing or something? Or? <laughs> well, you, oh, I don't you, want to go that you far. Take, you take it you away, Kira. No, 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 Kira. Yeah. <laughs> Are you? No. Nope. No singing. Okay, that's it. No more of that. Um, just going. Yeah, I'm gonna scroll all the way back up here because there were a lot of questions earlier on. Yeah, Kira's race shirts are the best. Patagonia, the best stuff. Uh, you're a member of the Patagonia team, right, Kira? Yes, I am. Yeah. That's awesome. That's really exciting. Are they like fully supportive of all the races that you run and stuff like that? Are they? Do they put you out there? Do they tell you which races you have to run, or do you get to choose? How does that work? No, you know, um, coming on board with the Patagonia Ultra Running Team was one of the best things that that has ever really happened to me as far as, like, through my running. Um, they are such an incredible company. They, they're they a company based on so much integrity, and they're just good souls and good human beings. And it trickles down through their management, and my team manager, George, has um, become one of Jesse and I's closest friends and he's just he's just good peoples and that's how the whole company is and our team we're just a bunch of like crazy weirdos but um, we're, we're really tight knit family and we have such a rad team and we support each other and Patagonia is so supportive of anything I want to do and they're amazing and I'm just so honored to be a part of that yeah it's it's really just so rad that's cool yeah I, I love that yeah. I love all this stuff. Uh, it, it's great to, to try on. Because I feel like they just started doing real trail running oriented gear in the last, what, five years? Yeah, so. yeah. Oh, for sure. Yeah. And the shoes, a lot of people don't understand, well, you do, what it takes to develop shoes. And, you know, the trail shoes, for, for them, it's still new. And mm -hmm. they're just, they're booming. And the, and they George has really worked his tail off to put together such an incredible team. And, you know, they, they put us all together. They fly us places. And, um, you know, to really give them solid input on what's wrong and what's right. and It's just awesome because they understand what it takes to make the best running apparel that's yeah. on the market right now, like hands down. I mean, it's Patagonia. Yeah. 
you know. So um, they they they're just nailing it left and right, which is awesome. And it seems like they're taking input from from the runners. I mean, Jeff had a lot to say about the Everlong, and you can see the changes just even there in their Strider Pro shorts for males from the yep. last season to this current season. Just seeing the changes are like, oh, this is a subtle change, but it is exactly what I would have wanted them to change in this particular garment. And they did it. You know, I love yeah. seeing that kind of stuff. Yeah, and, and awesome. ladies, ladies, there are pockets coming to the to the to the women's shredder. You pre- yeah, they're you so previewed. cute. Let me just tell you, <laughs> I'm getting they're my so pocket. <laughs> you uh, was that the picture that you posted recently with like the zippers on the front, the two zipper vertical pockets? Yeah, and you know everything is 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 all um, going to come together. But I'm getting my pockets. That's that's I'm gonna fight for them. <laughs> like there is no choice. <laughs> got to get pockets. Gotta have pockets. But yeah, it's just such great. It's just the best stuff on earth. I love Patagonia. So yeah. It's good. Molly, uh, we had Chris Vargo in the chat room, and he will be here this weekend running your race. Uh, do you have other elites, other sponsored guys or girls coming out to, to run El Moro? I have, um, let's see, I have quite a few fast runners. I'm really That's excited awesome. for my, um, good race. my race. It's going to be an awesome race. Um, I have well, obviously Chris Fargo and then Alicia Shea, who is also a sponsored Nike athlete, mm-hmm. um, coming to run, which will be fantastic to have her come run the course. Um, and Michelle Barton, who has my uh, women's course record right now, she's coming back as well to run the race. Um, John Clark who's a very fast, awesome runner. He'll be running the race for his first time. Um, and a few others, I, I kind of find it um, interesting, but it's always the week before the race that I get a lot of last-minute entries um, who want to run the race, which is great. It's awesome. Um, and then uh, possibly we may have some late entries <clears throat> <laughs> who will be joining the, the elite Sponsored athlete, aka Kira, um, <laughs> who might be, who might be jumping it, in to uh, yeah. oh yeah, she, she's I think she's gonna do it, and uh, as well as Jesse and I don't know we'll see I, I keep hearing about people who are gonna possibly come out so I'm so happy I'm just thrilled that people are gonna these these runners are gonna come out and have fun on my course because it is a little bit of a newer course which will be very interesting for everybody. Well, we're putting it on the map. We're doing what we can to put it on the map. Um, I want to make sure that I thank you, ladies, again, for coming on to Ginger Runner Live. I uh, really, really appreciate it. And you are welcome back any single week. If you have something to promote or you want to talk about a specific issue, you're like, you know what, this is, this is an issue I want to talk about. It deals with ultra running or trail running in general. Let me know. We'll, we'll get you back on the show. It's just it's so great to have you both thank on. You. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You got it. So thanks again for those of you who are uh, watching in the post show. I very much appreciate it, and we'll see you guys again next week live for Ginger Runner Live at Monday, 6 p.m. Pacific. That's it. All right. We'll see you guys next time. Bye.